Friends, welcome back to Wikipedia World. Last lecture we discussed about prism, and uh, we saw the relation between angle of uh, incidence, angle of emergence, the angle of prism, and the deviation caused by the prism. Today we will see closely the factors which affect the angle of deviation. We will see the important factors, and we will have a discussion about them. And uh, then we will close the lecture by going through a numerical about the angle of deviation. So let's start with today's lecture. Let's see what it has got for us. In the last lecture we got the relation that uh, angle of prism plus angle of deviation is equal to the angle of incidence plus emergence angle. Now today's lecture will focus on the factors which affect the angle of deviation. Let me write it down. Factors affecting angle of deviation. So one of the major factors which will affect the angle of deviation is at what angle the ray of light is being incident. So angle of incidence. Secondly, the angle of prism will also determine the angle of deviation. So, angle of prism. Now, once we have fixed the angle of prism and the angle of incidence, the angle of emergence will basically depend on what the refractive index of the material is. So, the more the refractive index of the material, more will be the emergent angle. Therefore, a third factor which will affect the deviation will be the refractive index. Refractive index. And finally, the refractive index of the material itself will depend on the wavelength of the light that we are using. So that will in turn affect the emergent angle and ultimately affecting the angle of deviation. So the fourth factor will be wavelength of light used. Now we will go in detail into each of the factors. We will begin with the angle of incidence. If you do a experimental setup and conduct an experiment to see what the behavior of angle of deviation is against a changing angle of incidence, what you will see is that initially Let's say this is the angle of deviation. This is angle of deviation and this is my angle of incidence. So initially with increasing angle of incidence, the angle of deviation will keep on decreasing. It will reach a lowest point for a certain angle of incidence. There will be a minimum angle of deviation. And beyond that, it will start to increase again. So the relation between angle of incidence and the angle of deviation is a initial decrease in angle of incidence, uh, rather a initial decrease in angle of deviation, followed by an increase in angle of deviation with increasing angle of incidence. This can be demonstrated by uh, experiment in which we are continuously changing the angle of incidence and noting down what the angle of deviation is. Now a point of interest, one of the most important points here would be the angle of minimum deviation, right? Here will be my, let's call it del M. And corresponding to del M, there will be some angle of incidence here. Now, so what will be interesting to see is that for what angle of incidence does the angle of deviation reach its minima? 
Now, as per experiments, what has been found out is that this condition happens when the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence becomes equal. Right? So, this is when I turns out to be equal to E, this condition. So, the angle of minimum deviation will occur when I is equal to E. And if you come to think about it, I is equal to E means if this is my prism and uh, if the ray is striking like this, then I is equal to E, what it means is that the ray inside the prism will be parallel to the base of the prism. Only in that condition will the angle of incidence here and the angle of emergence that is here will be equal. Right? So that is the condition of minimum deviation. Now let us replace this condition into the relation here. Let's do that. What we will find is that A plus delta minimum is equal to I can replace E with I. So it will be 2 times I. Which means the delta minimum value is 2 times angle of incidence minus the angle of prism. This is another very important relation which is a takeaway from our lecture today. What is the minimum angle of deviation? And what is the condition for minimum angle of deviation? Secondly, the relation between angle of prism and uh, the angle of deviation is found that they are directly proportional. That is, it increase in the angle of prism, the angle of deviation increases. And there is a special case in uh, where the angle of prism is very small. Under such circumstance, this relation follows. But remember, this is a very special case scenario. Let me write it down here. When A is very small, then what will happen is that the angle of deviation delta is equal to the refractive index minus 1 times the angle of prism. This is the condition when A is very small. But even if A is large, then even then the angle of deviation and the angle of prism follows in a direct relationship with increase in angle of prism the angle of deviation increases. Thirdly, the relation between refractive index and the angle of deviation is uh, again a direct relation. That is with increase in refractive index. Let me write it down here. As refractive index increases, delta increases. Now finally, let us touch upon the relation between the wavelength of light and the refract uh, angle of deviation. So when the wavelength of light increases, what happens to the refractive index? The refractive index decreases with the increase in wavelength of light. So as the wavelength of light increases, refractive index decreases and as refractive index decreases the delta that is the angle of deviation will also decrease right so the deviation from this what we can say is since the wavelength of a red light is maximum its deviation will be minimum delta red is less than delta violet. The wavelength of violet is least, so its refractive index is the highest, 
and deviation is the highest. So now we have covered the four factors on which the angle of deviation depends upon. The most important being at what angle it is incident, but also important are the angle of prism refractive index and wavelength, which in turn affects the refractive index. So with this understanding, let us uh, see a numerical in which we will use the relations we have learned in today's lecture. So this question states that uh, we have a equilateral triangle and we want to find that what should be the incident angle for a minimum deviation of 40 degrees. So what are the informations that we have? The first and foremost information that we have is that it's an equilateral triangle. So the angle of the prism will be equal to 60 degrees. Right? Now we need to find the angle of incidence. This is what needs to be found out. And the angle of minimum deviation delta min is equal to 40 degree. We know the relations. One of the relations is A plus delta is equal to I plus E. This is the generic relation. But the more special relation in case of minimum deviation we found out was A plus angle of minimum deviation is 2 times incident angle. So we are going to use this relation. We know the angle of prism because it is an equilateral triangle. We know the angle of minimum deviation. It's provided to us. We just need to find the angle of incidence. Sounds uh, quite straightforward. Manipulating this equation a little, what we'll get is A plus delta M is 2 times I. I is equal to A plus delta min upon 2. Angle of prism is 60 degree. Angle of minimum deviation is 40 degree upon 2, which is 50 degree. So what we see is that we need a angle of incidence incidence to be 50 degree for an equilateral triangle to have a minimum deviation angle of 40 degree. Okay, so this should have uh, given, helped you understand better the concept of angle of minimum deviation and its relation with incident angle. Next lesson we will see some simple applications of refraction of light, concept of apparent depth and real depth and uh, why do it appears that a stick or a pencil is bending underwater. So till next class, have a great day, goodbye.